Hello traders, hope you had a really good weekend. Uh, gonna do start the week off with this video here and things are looking pretty bullish but the uh, if you delve down into the sectors and the markets we really weren't getting a lot of broad support in today's uh, breakout and it's got me a little concerned on day one of the breakout. Uh, at any rate uh, you can follow me at Gumby9662C on Twitter and if you want just leave me a tweet and uh, I got a uh, Twitter group and I can add you to the Twitter group where I post my charts and stuff and ideas. Okay. Now if you look at the internal markets at the sector summary today if you notice energy by far was what was causing this breakout today and it was basically a short squeeze where the other uh, sectors were uh, really not participating much in the breakout rally today. So we'll see if we can get some rotation into the others to support the breakout. Now if you delve down into your energy, your oil equipment services and your renewable, or well, mainly your oil equipment services, uh, that's your XLE and uh, that's what was really driving the markets today plus a little bit with your renewable energies and that basically that was a short squeeze in your oil equipment and services okay these stocks here were the most heavily shorted on the energy complex and you can see 19 20 you know all kinds of stocks 10 percent gains in the uh, oil and equipment services space today and uh, this is definitely a short squeeze i also wanted to point out your renewable uh, equipment like your solars uh, uh, solar uh, energy, they were catching a really good bid today. So, and here's some uh, Solar City was just on fire, and then you had uh, a Chinese solar company. Uh, they were just getting one heck of a bid today. And it really looks like you're on your solar chart right here. Uh, the, the sector looks like it's get, uh, breaking out of prior highs, and and it broke right back in side the Bollinger Band today on very, on very strong strength. So I'm seeing it thinking some continuation in the energy space here. Uh, I have SLB which did very well today, Slumberger long and uh, I kept it and let the profit dry because I think we're getting a continuation. Some other things really running today, uranium was extremely strong today. Uh, URRE was up almost 50 percent today and uh, stock charts here they were talking about this last week can you imagine being in that making a 50 percent return this week holy moly and then the potash and mosaic mosaic stocks they were running too today okay so that's I, something i want you to keep uh keep on your radar we also saw some really good gains in the travel and tourism space today and uh, with uh avis uh budget group they were leading the charge and it hurts was uh, they got some upgrades today I believe and they were leading the charge and up 7% respectively I was like it was amazing you had TripAdvisor Priceline so a lot of the travel space is really on fire today now on the downside the home improvement retailers got a downgrade today and it was a broad downgrade that came out and uh, so they took it on the chin today while the other, while the rest of the markets seem to be breaking to new highs. This is quite important because this is a major retail and consumer discretionary space. And we were breaking, we had a nice little whip Bollinger Band squeeze today on the home builders, uh, home builder retailers. And we are breaking out of the Bollinger Band today. So keep this, and you know, if the markets revert lower, uh, this is probably going to lead to charge to the downside. Then again, if the markets break higher, this is probably an opportunity. We'll see what happens. A sector that I want to start keeping on watch, which has a positive divergence. Uh, that means the MACD is improving, but the price has been going lower. Is the airlines. And what's driving it are the foreign airlines in this uh, index where the domestic airlines are kind of lagging. So this might show some opportunity here with this foreign space if we can start seeing some uh, participation in the U.S. Air airlines. I'm going to run through quick uh, some of these negative divergences I noticed, MACD divergences. 
the mining space kind of looks overbought to me. We're outside the Bollinger Band. Uh, so, but we have a negative MACD divergence. So I'm wondering if the momentum is going to start drying up in this space. This index here is the gold mining index. And it's the same scenario outside the Bollinger Band with a negative divergence going on. This one here is the U.S. Exploration and Production Index, which is the energy sector. This is just slightly a negative divergence. Uh, got a little bit of an uptick in your MACD, but uh, the price seems to be leading the MACD a little bit here. We are putting new highs in here, and we are threatening to break above the Bollinger Band. So, Your integrated oil and gas looks a lot worse because you do have the solid negative divergence and it's been going flat for a very long time here and we are back with inside the uh, Bollinger Bands. The coast base looks kind of rolling over here too so keep this one on your uh, radar. The soft drink index seems to you got a lower low on your MACD uh, signal lines but you got a higher, high, uh, higher low on the price so uh, you do have a negative MACD divergence going on here but a lot of value built in this zone here. And thinking of soft drinks, Monster Beverage uh, had an incredible earnings report and we are breaking out to new highs today off of a very tight Bollinger Band squeeze. So that's why I'm leaning more bullish to the soft drinks and thinking you're going to see all time highs on Monster. Your publishing index here, you've got uh, Coming off lower lows on your MACD, but as a higher low on your uh, uh, price. So this is another one that's got me a little concerned. But we are do have a squeeze on the Bollinger Band suggesting higher prices on that one. This one here is your durable household products, which is also deals with your Home Depot. Because they uh, like your appliances and stuff. So, and you know... Uh, but you've got a long-term negative divergence going on here. Uh, and prices above uh, established, well-established value on, uh, on this index. Uh, here are some of the holdings in the XHB uh, uh, home, durable home goods. And one, one and very important is Whirlpool because it's also a ma the major holding in the XHB Home Builders Index. So even if so even though we have the negative divergence in the uh, durable goods, I just want to point out here, it looks like we've got an inverted head and shoulders pattern going on here. And we're squeezed out pretty tight here, suggesting that Whirlpool is actually going to catch a bit here. A uh, second red flag for the home builders here is the building materials and fixtures index. It's also sitting with a negative divergence, getting worse. So then again, Whirlpool might actually go lower along with the, uh, uh, what was it, the uh, building materials uh, retailers, uh, the home improvement stores. So that whole sector is looking under pressure here. Now, more times than not, when we see markets going to all-time new highs, and it's a lot of time done in the overnight session. So, and I think that's what's going to happen this time. I think we're going to see a uh, a big gap, big gap or multiple gaps up from foreign uh, the foreign markets driving our markets higher. Uh, I'm going to start with EWJ with Japan, and we had a little island top here that got rejected uh, back uh, in April. Okay. Well, now we're getting back, it, we've crossed back over resistance, and we have a potential to run back up again, okay? So keep this in mind, I, uh, Japan's actually showing some relative uh, strength here, because we did cross uh, above this trend line, and we're above the 68.5% FIB. Uh, FXI, which is China, it's largely financially weighted, but it is crossed. It crossed above this trend line also today, and it's uh, pushing up the Bollinger Band. Now, if you look on the economic calendar uh, tomorrow night, we got GDP for uh, Japan, which is very big, and then China is also reporting their imports, exports, and their trade balances. 
very important data hitting the docket uh, tomorrow. And then uh, Wednesday night we got more CPI and PPI data out of China, which is very important. Plus we got Draghi speaking Thursday morning. Also, China ha is closed Friday, so keep that in mind. Uh, uh, Thursday night, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, China will be closed come Thursday. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, because they, yeah, they're before us. So Friday they're closed. So Thursday night they are. Okay. So keep in mind with China, this is a holiday shortened week. And their markets are like ours. They get lower volume in the markets, which tend to be more bullish for the markets. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I know I have a bullish bias, uh, but I think what's going to drive this market higher will be actions that happen internationally, not necessarily actions that happen with us here in the United States. Uh, I got Under Armour up here because you're seeing a positive divergence here. We put in lower lows last week with a uh, bottoming tail candle, okay, with a very tight Bollinger Band squeeze, but the MACD is putting in, uh, uh, is, is not doing that. So keep this one on your watch list. I'm actually probably gonna initiate a long tomorrow. Another thing that I noticed today, footwear was really outperforming the markets on this breakout move, and that area has really been devastated with the Nike and stuff, and if you, uh, Look at the holdings here. Nike, you know, is one of the major holdings and stuff like that. So I did initiate a long on Nike today. Nike's coming off of a double bottom potential right here. We have reference bottom lows here. So, and it came back with inside the Bollinger Band today. So we'll see what happens with that. And we had above average volume on Nike. But I sold, uh, 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 credit spreads below uh, down here below uh, breakdown levels so I do have a little bit of room here is if it bounces at all here I actually make money so we'll see what happens that's all I really had to say here uh, I'm doing mostly credit spreads these days I'm not doing too many uh, just flat out uh, option trades even though the volatility is so cheap but uh, I will probably this week actually start doing more and more directional trades uh, as things pan out, but I really do think we're going to see higher highs this week. So that's all I had to say. Thanks a lot.